So one time when I was about 16 or 17, I was driving my car down the road, just barely got my license, and I saw a fleet of military Hummers driving the opposite direction. And I was so enthralled by this fleet of Hummers that I didn't notice the car in front of me stopped and fenders got bent. One of my very first car wrecks, all because Hummers are awesome. So if you thought the Hummer truck was the only new EV from GMC, you thought wrong. Behind me is the Hummer EV SUV. And today I'll show you what's different as well as how it all works from the inside. Batteries are pretty awesome. Let's get started. So the reason I like electric vehicles and electric trucks and electric SUVs so much is because that the power and torque is always there instantly from the very first RPM. When you have a gas powered vehicle or a diesel powered vehicle, you have to have the engine revved up to get the full power. This is ready to go from a standstill. And not only does it have all the power all the time, there's also hardly any maintenance, as well as you never have to go to a gas station, which is a pretty big deal. And Hummer has taken all of those conveniences and put them in a massively capable off-road package. I'm pretty excited about this. There's a few differences between the SUV and the truck. Notably, the wheelbase is nine inches shorter, as well as the bed is shortened up a little bit. There is a spare tire included with the SUV, but a lot of the things are the same, like the roof comes off, so it is a convertible. We still have those three windshield wipers up front, which is kind of fun. The front frunk also opens up to store those roof panels, which is pretty awesome. But one thing I didn't mention with the truck is that there are over 200 accessories available for this, one of which is a charger that can plug into the charge port and charge other electric vehicles. So if there was a Tesla that had lost his charge and was dead on the side of the road, this Hummer EV could be a Tesla rescue vehicle pull up alongside and start charging it up with six kilowatts of power pulling directly from the battery. There are still 17 different cameras all around the outside, including back up here by the back windshield, here by the tire, as well as underneath the vehicle. We'll get to the batteries in a second, but a lot of the features between the SUV and the truck are the same. Still has the crab mode, still has the air ride canisters that adjust themselves 500 times a second, you know, for a smoother ride. We still have five seats in the Hummer SUV, as well as more interior enclosed cargo space in the back. The enclosed cargo space can be opened with a key fob, as well as a button right here. We have the back opening up. The back window does come down as well. And just like the Hummer truck, we have the topographical map here of the Sea of Tranquility on the surface of the moon. It has the same kind of interior theme. With the seats laid down, we have about six and a half feet from the back of the driver's seat to right here. So if you wanted to camp and sleep in the bed of this, you could. As well as there's 82 cubic feet of storage. And the interesting thing is that this is exactly four feet wide. So if you wanted to put a sheet of plywood or something back here, you could. Which is incredibly useful if you use your vehicle like a tool, like I do. So if you're a fan of the original H1s like I am, you'll know that they had some pretty impressive water fording capabilities. They had a snorkel right here, and as long as the water line stayed below that snorkel, they could do rivers, lakes, streams, everything. This Hummer EV also has water fording capabilities. It's down right about here at 32 inches, just above the tire. So off-roading through lakes, rivers, and streams, as long as the water's below the tire line, is still just fine. And of course the interior has the same utilitarian rugged feel that we saw in the truck. It's got dual screens and buttons so that you can control everything right from the steering wheel and the side console without touching displays. I'm about six feet tall and here in the front seat I have enough leg space, arm space, and headroom, but let's check out the back. It's a little more cozy back here, but still plenty of room for the knees. And with the roof panels in place, they would still give me plenty of head clearance. But, of course, we're going to leave the roof off because the wind through your hair is the best feeling there is. For me, vehicles are tools. It would be really hard for me to buy something that I couldn't use and abuse. And Hummer has taken this into consideration when designing their off-road vehicle by giving us replaceable body panels if something does get dinged up. Check this out. With 17 body cameras and 16 inches of ground clearance, people are going to take this off-road. And this panel right here, anytime it ever does get dinged up or damaged, it can just be popped off and removed pretty easily. 
And of course, we also have the underbody protection protecting the battery pack, as well as, this is a pretty good shot of the control arms, and that air ride canister that adjusts those 500 times a second. This is also how it raises and lowers the suspension, and how the back wheel can rotate and turn for the crab mode. So both the Hummer EV truck and the Hummer EV SUV have over 11,000 pound-feet of torque at the wheels, and a zero to 60 of three and a half seconds. I think it's time we take a look at the battery to see what makes this all possible and how it really works from the inside. So right now, I am in GM's battery testing facility. Normally we would be wearing masks, but since it's so loud in here and we're practicing social distancing, I'm gonna take mine off so you can hear me. Each one of these blue machines behind me is a temperature controlled chamber where they can put entire EV battery packs and test them in super hot or super cold temperature ranges. There's a row of machines behind me as well as a row of machines the other direction. This facility is huge and it's where GM is testing their new Ultium battery technology. So inside of the GMC Hummer EV and the truck, there are battery modules that give the truck its power. These right here are the modules inside the truck. For the truck, it has 24 of these, and for the EV SUV, there's only 20. They can adjust the size of the pack because it's modular to fit either the SUV or the truck. So inside each of these battery modules are these pouch style lithium batteries. This is way bigger than the battery you would find inside of your cell phone. So a cell phone is usually anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 milliamp hours. This right here is over 100 amp hours. So each of these little pouches is like 20 to 30 cell phone batteries, and there's 24 of these pouches in each one of these modules and there's 20 modules inside each one of the cars. So basically, and I'm just doing all this math on the fly, basically the Hummer EV SUV is running on about 10,000 cell phone batteries, which is pretty compressive considering it's got a zero to 60 of three and a half seconds and over 11,000 pound feet of torque at the wheels. It's a good way to use your cell phone. But in order for these batteries to be safe, they need to go through a ton of testing. And inside of this battery lab, we have one of the coolest machines I've ever seen. They can simulate almost any environment, super hot, super cold, humidity up to 99%, all the way down to 1%, and they can cycle the batteries while they're inside of this chamber. This is the truck pack with the 24 modules inside. This chamber right here can go all the way down to negative 68 centigrade, all the way to 85 degrees, all while it's being charged and discharged. So like you're driving in the Sahara Desert or you're driving in Alaska, this allows you to test the battery in real time. So the chamber simulates the outside world while there is still coolant running through the pack itself. And remember that coolant can be cooled or heated, to keep the battery pack at the optimal temperature. Remember batteries, lithium batteries, are kind of like humans and they like to be in the same temperature that humans are at for their best performance in battery life. So anytime a lithium battery is charged or discharged, it fluctuates a little bit in its thickness. So what GM is doing here is it's measuring that tiny little bit of change with each of those cycles so they can engineer the foam inside of the battery packs. Once they know how much the batteries expand and contract, they can build the packs in a way that make them last a really long time. EV battery packs can last hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles. And this machine behind me is the ultimate durability test for lithium battery packs. It can provide a lifetime's worth of abuse in just a few weeks, and they call it the Mega Shaker. Inside of the blue chamber is temperature control, so they can get super hot, super cold, while the battery pack is driving a lifetime's worth of bumps on the road, and it all happens super fast in a short amount of time. The reason this machine is so large is so that it can fit an entire battery pack in it at the same time. Remember, this battery pack is literally the size of a truck and it has to fit in that machine to get tested. Right now behind me, they're running an air conditioner to lower the temperature of the blue chamber to negative 40 degrees Celsius. So behind me is the shaker itself. Right now it's positioned to shake the load in a horizontal way, but they can rotate, it's a, like a giant speaker, upright to shake the load vertically. This is the same setup that they use to test satellites for the vibrations while satellites are being launched into space. Because it's always way better to test it beforehand. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. 
Now, normally inside of a high voltage battery pack, inside of an EV, there's lots and lots of wires because each battery cell needs to be monitored for temperature and charging. There's just a lot going on inside of an EV battery pack. One cool thing that GM has done though is that they've made each of these battery modules wireless. Of course, they still have the high voltage lines running from the terminals, which are right here on the edges, but there are no BMS wires or battery management system wires. Right here, we have a Bolt EV battery pack where you can see a ton of battery management wires running around inside of it, which makes it a lot harder to assemble, repair, and recycle at the end of the battery's lifespan. Now, EV batteries last forever, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles. And at the end of their vehicle lifespan, they can still be turned into power walls or help assist with DC fast charging when the cars are out, you know, charging on the road. There are a lot of use cases for batteries as they go through their natural lifespan. The Hummer EV truck gets released at the end of this year, 2021, and the Hummer EV SUV gets released at the beginning of 2023. I'll have links and everything down in the video description for pricing and availability and those accessories that I talked about, but electric vehicles are the future, and I'm super excited for where things are headed. Come hang out with me on Twitter and Instagram, and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.